Okay, analytical solutions are great because they give us exact solutions to problems, uh, but they're limited because once the geometry starts to get at all complex, they become very difficult to solve uh, with just math. Um, so we're going to start and, and solve one to see what it looks like, and we'll do a couple others in class and for homework. Um, and then we'll turn to numerical solutions to try and uh, solve some more complicated ones. So we're going to start with the simplest problem we can. Steady state, so we don't even need an initial condition. We're going to assume we're, uh, nothing's changing. Uh, 1D uh, temperature uh, field, so there's no flux in the X or Z directions and no heat generation. Um, so, oh, and finally, two temperature boundary conditions. We're not going to deal with a flux boundary condition yet. So the first step in uh, solving this is to simplify our equation. So let's take this guy and think about what these assumptions mean, right? What does steady state mean? Well, it means dt over dt is nothing. So this whole term disappears. No heat generation, so this term disappears. Nothing in the y or z direction, so these two terms disappear. And the only thing we have left is our diffusion term in the x direction. And so that's what our simplified heat equation looks for this particular problem. So we x out all of those. In addition to that, now we have a constant on one side and zero on the other, we divide both sides by K and we end up with this, which has an interesting physical discovery, right? That solution to this problem does not depend on K. K can be anything we want and we're gonna find the same solution for this particular problem. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we solve this little differential equation. So we're gonna integrate twice uh, so that we have a T equals something. We want a, a temperature field um, for our problem. So our first integration is this guy here. So we're integrating zero, so we'll get a constant uh, on this side, and we'll get rid of one, of one order of our differential equation, and that's our midway point. Uh, if we had a flux boundary, this is the equation we could use to figure out what C was. It would tell us what uh, what our constant was. We're going to integrate that again. So we integrate this guy twice, um, or one more time rather, and um, we get a nice linear equation, right? So we could have guessed that uh, because this tells us what's our curvature. It's no curvature, <laughs> and so that must be linear. Okay, so that's going to tell us this is our general solution. Um, so it looks something like that, right? We know we're going to have a linear solution to this problem. It doesn't have anything to do with K. Um, it only has to do with the particular solution is going to have to do with our initial conditions. Or our boundary conditions, rather. So to apply our boundary conditions, we take our known general solution and we put our uh, boundary conditions into that solution. So we know when x is equal to 0, t is equal to t1. So we take this equation and we put x equal to 0, t is equal to t1, because our general solution was t equals c1 times x plus c2. We solve this guy and it tells us, oh, c2, our second constant, is actually just t1, whatever our first temperature, our, our temperature at the left side was. We then take our other boundary condition. Remember, we needed two because it's a second order equation. And that was that at uh, x equals L over here, the temperature equals T2. So we're going to put that into, here's our uh, general solution with our new uh, defined constant. And we put in L for x and T2 for T and we get this over here, and then we can solve that for C1. So we had two constants, right? And we're using two boundary conditions to find out what those constants are. So there's our constant. And if you look at that, um, that makes a lot of sense, right? What's, what's the slope, right? What's the slope of this line? Well, it's the delta T divided by delta X. 
That's what this C1 is. It's just telling us what the slope of that line is. Okay, so we sub those now known constants uh, into our equation and we have our particular solution here. Um, so given what, I, assuming we know what T1 and T2 are, those are our boundary conditions, we now have a particular unique solution uh, to this uh, heat equation problem. All right, the last thing we can do here is we can find the flux. Okay, so we now have, this is, this describes our whole temperature field, right? Every point in here is described by this. I can pick an X and it'll tell me what the temperature is. Okay, now we can put that into Fourier's law, right? This is T, so we just take this whole big guy and we stick it in for T. Okay, uh, and then we take the derivatives. All right, so we're going to separate our terms here. All we're doing here is taking this D, and multiplying it by this guy. So we get a DX here with a constant, so we can pull that constant out. And then a DT1 over DX. So here's the DT1 over DX. Here's our DX over DX. Uh, and we can solve that. How? What's the rate of change of our constant? That's zero, so that goes away. What's dx over dx? That's one, so that goes away, leaving just this guy here. Our slope times k tells us what our flux is. Okay, that makes good sense, right? That's what Fourier's law tells us that the flux is the slope times uh, k. Um, and so now K matters, right? Because we have the same temperature field, but if we have a really conductive material, we're gonna get a lot more heat flux uh, through that material. And the last thing to kind of think about, uh, or a couple of things, what direction is this flux in? We can figure that out mathematically, right? So at least in, let's imagine our picture here. T2 is less than T1, so that's gonna be negative and those two negatives are gonna cancel out, so our flux is gonna be left to right in our positive direction. Does that make sense? Sure, right? We have high temperature over here and low temperature over here, so we're gonna see a flux in the left to right direction. Uh, and then what is the flux at zero uh, and L? Um, we could um, put that into this equation and you'll notice there's no X there, right? So why is there no X? Because we have a steady state. Uh, and if this is a control volume, we know that the energy of our volume is not changing. So we have to have the same flux in uh, that we have going out. And that is how we solve a, a heat equation problem analytically.